This morning we're going to look at uh, three awesome things about Christmas. Uh, awesome in the right sense there. And uh, the reason we're going to do this, I've been thinking about it this week, and a grumpy Christian should be a contradiction in terms. The more I've been thinking about it, the more I can see this is such an important thing. There should be no such thing as a saintly Scrooge. There should be no such thing as gloomy godliness. It's true Christians aren't supposed to have a permanent grin, leaping and singing like Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music, that's not the idea. But neither is it true that Christians should have a permanent frown, and act like the two old men on the Muppets who spend all their time being miserable. That's not virtuous, that's not holy. Why? Because Christians have good news, great news, the best news that anybody has ever heard. And this morning I want to prove that point to you to make your Christmas evening and afternoon even more amazing. This morning we're going to briefly see three amazing things about the truths of Christmas that show us why it's the best news ever. So the first amazing thing that makes the Christmas story so wonderful is glory, more specifically God's glory. Let me read to you again verses 14 and 15. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out that he was before me. Uh, of him who, sorry, of whom who it said, he was before me, ranks before me, because he was before me. Sorry, I got that a bit wrong, but you get the idea. But it's amazing how much glory comes into the Christmas story. Think about those readings we had earlier. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And when he's taken a few days later to be circumcised, the old man Simeon proclaims that Jesus is a light for the rev a revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And here John says, we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. He's saying that in Jesus we see glory that shines like the Father's. There's something about Jesus that shines, that gleams from him. Something that is glorious, like a blinding light from him. Glory is something that glows, that shines, that announces itself and demands to be seen. It's like that moment when you've taken a bare Christmas tree and you've decorated it with tinsel and baubles and shining lights. And now it's as it should be, shining in all its glory. So much so that it demands that you stand back and admire what has happened here, the glory that is before you. And God's glory to the shepherds, as we read earlier, was so real and so present, so tangible, that the glory of the Lord shone as the angels appeared. The sheer excellence of God shone out. It was so great that you could see it in some way. But God is not a Christmas tree or a cosmic light bulb. What is it that shines about God? It's his character, his holiness, his nature. And here in our passage, the word becomes flesh and he shines, he shines with glory. God's glory. After we all, we read back in John 1 verse 1, the word was God. Jesus shines with God's glory. There's something weighty and wonderful about the Lord Jesus. When we read about him in the Gospels, he shines with God's glory. So the Christmas story is about glory, God's glory. And in fact, when you read the rest of the Bible, you discover that everything is for God's glory, for his majesty, for his excellence, for his wonderfulness. And he's there to be appreciated and enjoyed by all. So at Christmas time, God's glory came into the world. The word became flesh, the Lord Jesus, the only son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's our second point. First was glory, second is grace. Let me read to you verse 16. For from his fullness we have all received grace 
upon grace. What is grace? Well, grace is a very Christmassy word. It means a present, a gift. Did anyone get presents this morning? Yeah? Okay, some of us did. Some of the kids did. Apparently, Alice didn't. Never mind. <laughs> Need to work harder, children, getting presents for the grown-ups. But a present is something that is free, isn't it? And that's what grace is, something that is free. God's unmerited, undeserved, unwarranted, unearned favour. No one can earn their way into God's good books. You or I cannot earn our way into God's favour. It's bestowed freely as a gift. And all we must do is trustingly receive it. You see, many people think, don't they, that Christianity is all about laws and rules. But look at verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come to bring us guidelines. He came to offer us grace. <laughs> He didn't come to bring us rules, he came that we might receive life. And I think many people think that life is like a quiz show or the board games that you get at Christmas time. You know, the aim is to get as many points in life so you can win the prize at the end. Heaven or Nirvana or Paradise or whatever you want to call it. But Christianity teaches something different. That the prize at the end is offered freely. But all we must do is humble ourselves to receive it freely. And that's how it works at Christmas too with our presents. Let me do a straw poll. Who didn't receive their gifts this year because they've been too naughty? Anybody didn't receive that? Oh, the word, okay. I thought that was going to be not, no one, okay. But that's not, no, normally, normally that's not how presents work, is it? That's always confused me a little bit about Santa's list, you know, you're not supposed to earn a present, otherwise it's not a present, is it? That's not a present, that's a wage, that's a paycheck, isn't it? Presents are meant to be received, not earned. And Jesus came full of grace, that free gift. He didn't come to help us earn our faith with God by better rules. He didn't come to tell us to book our ideas up. He came to offer us favour with God, paid for him by himself on the cross, won by his own sacrifice, and he offers it to us freely. Which, thinking about, back to our first point, it means it's about his glory, not ours. If Christianity was all about our earning our way to God, then it would be about our own glory, wouldn't it? We would be sort of earning our way up to Christmas, or earning our way up to our gifts. It would be about me seeing myself as better than the other people around me. And we've all seen the damage that that sort of hypocritical, sort of holier-than-thou attitude can do. But it's not about working for our own glory. It's about receiving God's grace, freely given to be received by faith. And that means that no matter what we've done this year, whatever mistakes that we've made, whatever regrets we might have, we can enjoy our Father's welcome by grace. His smiling face, his favour by grace. Because it's not about what you've done, but what Jesus did. It's not about how hard you've tried, but how much he gave. And he gave it all. And it started at Christmas time. We all want a clean slate sometimes, don't we? We wish for a new beginning, a fresh start. Well, Jesus offers that to us freely by grace. But how can Jesus offer us grace? How can a man do that? Well, that's the last thing that makes Christmas the best news ever. This is it. If I glory grace and then a glimpse. Let me read to you verses 17 and 18. For the law came through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him no. Jesus came into the world to reveal what God is like. And over the past few years, there's been a trend, I think, that people are less keen on God, but quite keen on Jesus. So they don't like Jesus, sorry, they do like Jesus, but they don't like God. Even Richard Dawkins, the high priest of atheism, flatters Jesus in his books as intelligent and compelling. Yet he calls God all the names under the sun. 
Even Gandhi was an admirer of Jesus. He said, I like your cross. What people don't get to get, seem to get though, is that Jesus is God. That's why he can offer us pardon from God. That's why he shines with the Father's glory. He is God. So if you like Jesus, you like God. If you like Jesus' character, you like God's character. Later on in John's Gospel, Jesus will say to his disciples, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. To see Jesus is to see God. Jesus is God made visible. As it says in our passage, he is the one who has made him known. Jesus is God that you can see. There's a story of a young girl at Sunday school who decided that she was going to draw God. A Sunday school teacher told her, you can't do that. Nobody knows what God looks like. The girl replied, they will when I've finished. <laughs> But if she'd have drawn a picture of Jesus, of course we don't know what Jesus would look like. But if she'd have drawn Jesus, in a sense she would have drawn God. Nobody has seen God in his godness. God told Moses that no sinful human being could do that and live. But Jesus reveals God. We see Jesus, we see God. The word has become flesh. God became man. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. That's from Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Jesus reveals what God is like. So on the outside, he looked like an average Middle Eastern male, despite how 2,000 years of pictures have drawn him. But it was not his physique that revealed God, but his character. As you look at Jesus' life, you can see God. Not just the miracles which show his power, but in his kindness, in his compassion, in his passion that show his character. In Jesus we see God. So if you like one and not the other, if you like Jesus and you don't like God, then you haven't understood either. Because Jesus gives us a glimpse of God in time. We're going to be looking at Jesus' life over the next few weeks, the next few months, uh, on Sunday mornings as we look through Mark's Gospel. We're going to be seeing what Jesus is like. And as we do that, we see what God is like. If it turned out that our God uh, was mean and vindictive, then that wouldn't be a very good gospel, would it? If you think about it as we go through that. But the more we look at and appreciate the character of Jesus, the more that we will see that the gospel offers us a relationship with a good God. And that brings us good news. As we see how great and glorious God is, we see how great and glorious the gospel is, which offers us a relationship with this God. So today, even if you're not a big Christmas fan, I know I've got my Christmas jumper on, it's not my most garish one. Even if you've had enough by nine o'clock this morning, do you know what, you've no reason though today, whatever you think about Christmas, to be grumpy. Because if this God is your God, if this gospel is your gospel, that actually this is the greatest news ever for every day of the year. Even if you didn't get the presents that you wanted this morning, even if someone gave you a book when you wanted a popcorn maker, or a popcorn maker when you wanted a book, you've got no reason to be grumpy if you've got the gospel. So my only question this morning really is, have you got the gospel? Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, if you haven't, or you're not sure, why don't you come along to that course on a Monday night that's running in the new year? Find out more about the good news. Or grab a book from the table at the back. We're not going to be able to have them out next week, because they're all about Christmas. So grab one before you go. And if you have got the gospel, then don't be a Scrooge. Be a saint. Let the good news infuse you this Christmas time and every week throughout the year that's to follow. Remember the glory. Remember the grace and seeing Jesus a glimpse of God. Have a happy Christmas. Let's pray. Father, we'll thank you for the gift of the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you that you sent him into our world. And Father, thank you that you gave everything. Father, you gave your son to us that we might enjoy life and life to the full. Father, help us to remember these things which can bring us joy, good news of great joy for all people. And Father, pray that whatever else makes us happy today, Father, pray that the gospel of the Lord Jesus will make us even happier 
and even more joyful. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.